A lot of programs and people out there are trying to offer us shortcuts through the learning process. If you just play my game, you'll move a lot faster. And here we learn, no, there is no shortcut through the learning process. If we ever want to learn something, we have to focus on that thing. So as teachers, we have to be very wary and we have to avoid promises of quick fixes, of silver bullets, things like brain training that are gonna help students across the board. We just know that isn't true. Hello everybody and welcome to this week's From Theory to Practice, where I take a look at the research so you don't have to. Now as you know, we're taking a journey through my new book, 10 Things Schools Get Wrong and How We Can Get Them Right, and this week we're going to take a look at Chapter 6, which is called 21st Century Skills, The Problem with Transfer. Now the article I've selected this week that aligns with that chapter is called Near and Far Transfer in Cognitive Training by Sala and colleagues. Now to understand this paper, there are kind of two concepts we have to wrap our head around. The first is essentially the basic learning process. Now, in order to learn anything, the key ingredient for most situations is repetition. The more you repeat something, the easier it is for you to do that thing. Now, as we repeat a particular skill, our brain kind of moves through four stages. So it begins in what we call our active learning stage. This is when the brain is working furiously to make sense of something new. It doesn't really know what's going on, so it's working hard. The more we repeat though, the brain starts to undergo plasticity. It starts to adapt to this new skill we're repeating. Now as we repeat more, the brain moves into what's called modularity. Essentially it builds a little network or module related to that skill. And finally, as we keep repeating, the brain moves into automaticity. Now it can perform that skill with little effort or conscious thought. Now a very simple example of this in action is just consider driving. When you first learned how to drive, I imagine it was miserable. Your brain was in high active learning mode. Now the more you practiced, 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 eventually your brain started to change, it built a module, and I'm guessing now when you drive, you look a little bit more like this. It's pure automaticity, you don't even have to connect. So that's concept number one. The second concept we have to understand is this issue of transfer. So transfer, simply put, is how do we take skills, knowledge, abilities from one context and apply them to another? Now transfer by and large comes in two flavors. The first is what we call near transfer. So this is when we move skills or ability between two very similar contexts. So for instance, if I'm really good at an iPhone 5, I could probably do very well with an iPhone 6. I'm moving my skills between two very similar contexts. The other flavor is what we call far transfer. This is when you attempt to move skills between two very different contexts. So for instance, let's say you're very good at poker, Far transfer might say, let's use those skills over here in the stock market to start making money. So we've got this learning process and we've got this near far transfer issue. Now let's bring these two together. A very important thing to recognize about learning is this. As you move through that basic learning process, your ability to transfer skills narrows significantly. In other words, the more automatic a skill becomes in a particular context, the harder it becomes for you to consciously access those skills and tweak them to suit other contexts. Transfer narrows with automaticity. Now enter this paper. What these researchers say is, look, there's a lot of cognitive training programs out there that argue they can generally make kids better, smarter, faster, and through this one program, make all of their schooling easier. But with the issue of transfer, is that accurate? So these researchers pull a lot of data together to say, okay, do these cognitive training programs demonstrate near transfer, and do they demonstrate far transfer? What can we meaningfully expect from them? And here's what they found. The most prominent programs are, of course, working memory training programs. These are things like CogMed and Luminosity. And here's what they find. With regard to near transfer, these programs demonstrate a 0.29 effect size. So what this means is when kids undertake a working memory training program, they get really good at that program and other programs that are very much like it. So if you get good at CogMed, you'll probably be good at Luminosity. Cool. But what about far transfer? Turns out when it comes to far transfer, these programs confer an effect of 0.01, essentially nothing. When you play working memory games, you get really good at those games, but nothing else really changes. And there's simply no far transfer. But let's not stop there. What about the far transfer impacts of music training? Turns out those impacts are negative 0.02, essentially nothing. What about chess cognitive training? Far transfer, 0.01, nothing. What about action video games? Negative 0.01. What about puzzle-based video games? 0.00. What about exercise-based video games? Negative 0.02. Yes, all of these cognitive training programs demonstrate good near transfer. You can get better at those programs, but absolutely no far transfer. They do not make you a generally better student. So let's bring this back. What does this all mean for us as teachers? Well, I can think of three things. And the first is this. 
We have to focus on what it is we want our students to learn. If we want our students to improve their math scores, it doesn't make a lot of sense to spend two hours a week playing a memory game or an attention game. It makes more sense to use those two hours to focus on math. Ensure students have the time and ability to learn what they have to learn here and not try and Trojan horse that skill in through some secondary means, which we now know isn't going to work. Which leads to our second idea, we need to explicitly focus on transfer. Too often we simply hope that because a kid can demonstrate a skill here, they'll be able to move it elsewhere, and too often we see that doesn't really happen. And now we know why, transfer never happens automatically. It has to be a conscious process. So just to be clear, as we move through that learning process, our ability to transfer narrows, but it's not impossible. We can continue to transfer. All it requires is the conscious accessing of those skills. We have to take something off of autopilot, bring it into conscious awareness so we can play with it. So transfer is possible. We just have to be explicit and practice with it. So we have to build transfer into our lessons, constantly asking kids, how does this relate to what we learned last week? How can we use yesterday's skills to address today's problems? Transfer becomes a focus. And the third takeaway then is this is a lot of programs and people out there are trying to offer us shortcuts through the learning process. If you just play my game, you'll move a lot faster. And here we learn, no, there is no shortcut through the learning process. If we ever want to learn something, we have to focus on that thing. So as teachers, we have to be very wary and we have to avoid promises of quick fixes, of silver bullets, things like brain training that are gonna help students across the board. We just know that isn't true. Now, this doesn't mean we shouldn't do cognitive training. Like just because music doesn't boost math scores, does that mean we shouldn't do music? Of course not. Music for the sake of music is totally fine. So this just also means we have to be very clear on our purposes. If we're doing something because the personal benefits are meaningful for us and our students, then let's continue to do it. But if we're doing something with the hope that it's gonna demonstrate far transfer and offer us a shortcut through the learning process, that simply never has worked and it's not going to work. Now, what does this transfer issue have to do with 21st century skills? That's what we take a look at in chapter six of this book. We dive deeper into this and say, okay, critical thinking, creativity, communication, collaboration, how do these skills align with the transfer issue and what is required for effective transfer to take place? So very practical chapter. So I hope you all enjoyed this and got something good from it. And if you like what you saw, if you can give us a thumbs up and subscribe below, it'll make sure more people get a chance to see this. Otherwise, I hope you're all well and I'll see you guys next time. Bye y'all.